So, one month ago, I put out my report titled NVIDIA's Ultimate Play, and it highlighted how NVIDIA was rushing out a barely ready Ampere early and making the best of it with forced scarcity to jack up prices because they wanted to be perceived by consumers like they were offering lower prices than Turing while not really doing it. NVIDIA was trying to have their cake and eat it too. Now, eventually, they would have ample supply about oh a month or two after ampere came out as i reported last month but until then they were hoping people would become so desperate for ampere that when the larger supply did hit the market people would impulse buy even if the street price was higher and since then i have been putting out little updates here and there as i get more information in you know one of the updates was confirming that the bomb cost of aib Ampere 3080s was around $600 on average, meaning that the Founders Edition with its compact, expensive, high quality, not breaking coolers was probably being sold close to cost and that they were making this up to AIBs who were making probably below 40% margins on the close to $700 models by giving them a rebate that expired at the end of October. And Normally, another update would just simply be added to the article and talked about on Broken Silicon, and it is on the episode that comes out tomorrow, but this update was big enough and important enough that I felt compelled to make this its own video. So now let's get straight to the point. What are these big updates I have to the NVIDIA Ultimate Play and Ampere availability? Well, first of all, there are no GDR6X shortages for NVIDIA. I just need to debunk those reports coming out right now. They're bullshit. Or, at the very least, people reporting on forum posts saying it's GDR6X don't know the full picture. The fact of the matter is, I told you guys a month ago that NVIDIA was controlling availability until they were ready to flood the channels by keeping an iron grip on key components i wasn't allowed to say what those key components were at the time but with these reports coming out i've been given the go-ahead the key component and i've hinted at it pretty obviously in a few broken silicons and live streams is gdr6x nvidia has bought up large stockpiles of gdr6x chips m many many millions of them over a month ago and they were holding those for when they produced far more 3080s and 3090s around the end of October. And what I've been told is that's what they're doing right now, by the way. So I have exact numbers, and I'm allowed to say them this time. Right now, NVIDIA is shipping over 300,000 3080 and over 30,000 3090 dies to be implemented in final cards with GDR6X to be put on sale when early november late october exactly as my report said one month ago and you might notice is right around when big navi launches this is not a coincidence additionally of course there is the 20 gigabyte 3080 coming by december which i'll confirm again yeah that is coming uh but i have the price so premium aib models which Honestly, the 20 gigabyte 3080 is AIB only anyways. The premium models will be close to $1,000, and some of the cheaper versions may get to close to $850. Now, $1,000 is no surprise. That's what I expected. But $850 is a little cheaper than I was anticipating. Although, having said that, GDR6 and even GDR6X isn't that expensive. I think there's a higher markup even at $850 for the 20 gigabyte version than there is for the... 700 to 750 dollar models of the 3080 and at the end of the day don't be so sure how many of those 3080 20 gigabyte models will even be close to 850 remember in my ultimate play article i talked about how nvidia would mandate that around 20 percent or less of the launch cards be actually close to msrp and they would provide around 50 dollar rebates to the aibs that were willing to sell cards fairly close to at cost or at least lower than margins they would normally want and honestly if we go to new egg and it's not perfect but if we look at how many reviews there are per model huh notice there is absurdly more reviews for the models that are above msrp they're not selling a lot of these cards close to the cost they say the entry price is in effect because of the force scarcity nvidia is selling cards 
about at what Turing's prices were. As I covered a month ago, and they are stuffing the channels around the end of October, as I said they would a month ago. And so in conclusion, NVIDIA's ultimate play is definitely still in play. It's all going off exactly as I said it was. There is a difference between more availability and no shortages, right? I know NVIDIA is publicly telling people there will be shortages, but that doesn't mean there isn't more availability. It just means that they are not meeting demand, a demand that they've gotten to a fever pitched by making Ampere become an impulse buy because if you see it in stock, oh, you just got to get it because it'll never be in stock. That's what they're priming you for. Behind closed doors, they are telling AIBs, and this is a quote, there will not be availability issues in quarter four. They're lying to you. NVIDIA's lying to you. Just like they lied about there being a Fortnite boom when there was really a mining boom. And I think most people will eat it up. People are desperate to get Ampere. They think that it's going to be hard to get for the rest of the year. And it actually might be because now people will buy them up even if there's tons of stock available. And speaking of tons of stock available, the RTX 3070. The final bit of Ampere insider info I have to tell you guys today is that I am told there will be an absurd amount of RTX 3070s hitting the market around, again, late October, early November, which is when the 3070 comes out. So <laughs> if you want a 3070, you're going to be able to get it based on what I'm told. And yeah, they did push back the RTX 3070 launch to one day after the Navi 21 reveal in case they have to last minute make the price lower than $500 for review day. So that's all there is to say. NVIDIA's ultimate play is going on without a hitch. And uh, I don't know. I'm hoping enough people learn about this so that they can't entirely get away with their plans. All right, now before I go, I do want to speak just briefly about Zen 3 and the new pricing, or should I say the raised pricing versus Zen 2. Um, I talk about it in depth in a die shrink that patrons heard on Friday, and of course Broken Silicon 70 will talk about it for quite a while, but I do feel like it's worth putting in a shorter, more pointed video. Specifically, I want to use a comparison to a previous launch to summarize my thoughts on if Zen 3 is overpriced, and that is a comparison to the 1800X. Three years ago, the 8-core, 16-thread, 1800X launched for $500 without a box cooler. And AMD was able to command this price because in terms of multi-core performance and efficiency, Intel couldn't touch it. And so here we are, three years later, the 5800X is launching, again, the successor to the 1800X, eight cores, 16 threads, and it brings a $50 lower price point and over 40% performance boost. And then in games, over 50%. So is Zen 3 overpriced? Well, I don't know. Despite inflation and despite Intel selling an equivalent processor for close to $600 on Newegg right now, AMD is launching something over 50% better, at least in gaming, than what they had three years ago at a lower price. Do you think that is uncalled for? Because I don't. I think that is a fair price, and I think it is a price that is more than fair when you consider that Intel has nothing for an entire year. Think about that. AMD is launching a processor that Intel cannot touch for a whole year, and it's priced lower than where they entered with eight cores three years ago. And if price performance is your number one metric and you have to upgrade this holiday season, I'm going to give the same advice I gave one year ago. Buy a previous generation Zen processor. When everyone was going crazy over Zen 2, I came to the conclusion that most people should just buy the $150 at the time around Black Friday last year 2700X. That's what my brother, co-host of Broken Silicon, did, in fact. And that's what I'm going to say now. If you care about price performance, I don't know why you want to buy the best of the best that's coming brand new onto the market. You should be willing to get rid of maybe 30% performance and pay less than half as much. And I think that's what you'll be able to do with Zen Plus and Zen 2 discounted processors. 
in about a month from now. So just do that. But if you want the best of the best, that's not Intel anymore. That's AMD. And they are offering you best of the best gaming and multi-core performance for less money than Intel when they know they won't have competition for a year. You're just going to have to pay a little extra than last year for the best processors on the market. But I don't think most people should do that. Just like I didn't think most people should do that last year. And I suspect I won't tell, I will also tell people this exact same advice one year and two years from now as well. Do you want to save money or do you want the best? The only thing that's changed is that now AMD is the best. And in fact, I'm not really sure what Intel's going to do. I know a lot of people are saying they're going to turn into what AMD was in the bulldozer era and sell processors for super discounted prices. But when I look at Newegg right now, uh, I'm seeing Zen 2 and Zen Plus processors being sold below where Intel is, probably even below where Intel's Comet Lake processors will be after a price cut. So frankly, I think Intel's just out of the do-it-yourself market entirely now. If you want budget, you get last-gen Zen. If you want the best, you get the newest Zen. And if you want a bad purchasing decision, well, then you stumble into Intel, who doesn't even have the latest PCIe, uses too much energy, has security vulnerabilities, and is on an outdated platform. That's just the situation we're in right now. And if things change, I will change my opinion, but that is my opinion as of now. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button to hear all of these updated opinions and leaks regarding Zen, Intel processors, uh, RDNA 2, another video about that is coming soon, and of course, Ampere. And if you have the extra money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you will get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon every week. It's out now for patrons, actually. And, of course, exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink, Hits and Gems, and early access to Flyover States, and all other types of content. You can communicate with the creators of this channel and so on and so forth. And, of course, as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>